Hello, and welcome back to the Cell Block Scorch. I hope you've been having a great week, and that your weekend's gonna be awesome. Uh, this is week 220B. Um, I'm Octo, and yeah, you're only gonna hear from me on Saturdays for a while. But this week, Red prompted, and she gave us the prompt, Welcome to Sunny Seabrook, where the sun always shines, chimes are always on the wind, and everything is perfectly normal. Um, I won it this week with a piece called Just Seabrook. I never claimed to be the best at, you know, naming things, but I think, you know, the contents should prove interesting. I hope you get a kick out of it. Seabrook is an idyllic little town next to a nice stream. Or maybe the ocean. It's a little unclear. Regardless, the sound of running water, perhaps waves, washes peacefully over every centimeter of the town. From certain angles, the air ripples as if light is shining through invisible curtains. Must be the heat. It's perfectly normal, as are the chiming noises that echo softly each time a breeze blows. Blows back and forth, back and forth, ebbing and flowing like the tide. Ding! Ding, ding, as breezes do. We sway in the breeze. Our feet are nearly touching the ground, and that is perfectly fine as well. The ivy sways with us, floating like kelp from where it is anchored to the walls. Isn't it beautiful? I certainly think so. We drift further into town. Further down, down the road. Ding, ding, ding. The chimes fade away slowly as we progress, but they still ring as the breeze rocks back and forth. I smile at you, and you smile back, silvery bubbles streaming from your mouth. We enter my home, and your eyes are getting flat and glassy. The peacefulness of the town is making you drowsy. So drowsy. I've invited you to take a rest in my home, and you graciously accept. You're so polite. Ducking under the door frame, I tug you into a bedroom so you can sleep, and you're ever so grateful. The bed is rotted away, but just for you, I've arranged a hammock weaved from the softest gossamer. Definitely gossamer. Why would it be anything else? and I carefully tuck you in. You're wrapped so securely, so you won't roll out by accident. Isn't it safer that way? It's time for you to sleep. I smile at you, needle-sharp teeth on full display, as the faint ringing of the buoy on the surface sends you off to your eternal rest. Good night, darling. Hello, this is Red. I was the judge for this week's Scorch, and... I chose Octo as the winner because second person horror is just uh, really my thing, you know. It's it's good in small doses. I wouldn't read like an entire book of second person horror, but that's because you know that's a lot. But it was just a good sweet dose of horror, basically. Yeah, and the other ones were pretty good too. Um... I don't think there's a specific reason why I didn't choose any of the the other two. Um, I think it's probably just because Octo did the prompt kind of the closest to the way I was imagining it. But it's good. It's fun. And, uh, yeah, that's basically it. So, I hope that that was at least a little unsettling. I am apparently too adorable in real life to scare people, so I have to get my kicks through fiction where they can't actually see my face. You know? But I really liked the prompt this week. I like making creepy things. I think it's fun and an interesting way to, I don't know, express myself in a way that I don't usually do. I really like writing prose, and I like things to not be what you think they are. So it's it's like a match made in heaven, right? This prompt... Where things are, everything is perfectly normal. Obviously, things were not perfectly normal, right? I couldn't write something perfectly normal after that kind of a prompt. 
And I don't know. I was I can't remember exactly what I was thinking when I wrote this scorch, but I do remember that I wanted it to be in like some sort of body of water because it's Seabrook, right? That's two whole bodies of water. We have to put it in there somewhere. And it's supposed to be sunny there. But how can you make somewhere sunny super creepy if the sun is broken? And the sun is broken because it's shining through the waters of the body of water you have been dragged beneath by this creature. Um, I think in this, the kind of creepiness that I was wanting came from the idea that you think you know where you are, but you don't. Like, have you ever woken up in the middle of the night and it's pitch black? And you think you know the direction you're facing, like, if your bed is next to a wall. And so you, like, reach out to adjust yourself, and you were just completely wrong. And just for that one terrifying moment, you're like, I am in the void. I don't exist. What is happening? And then, of course, you find the wall, and you're like, oh, I just turned over. I'm an idiot. But for that moment, it's super freaky. Maybe that's just me. But we'll see if anyone else agrees with me. So that's kind of what's happening here. You think that you're in a normal town for, like, the first five seconds of this piece, hopefully. And then things start getting creepy. The breeze should not be chiming. Specifically, there should be wind chimes, but there is no wind chime. The sun is shining, but it's it's doing something funky. It's not right. And the longer it goes, the more it becomes obvious to that we're actually, like, you know, in some sort of body of water. Things are floating, like... You and me are floating, and that is not right. The ivy is is f- actually just like kelp. Things are freaky. And then, I don't know what kind of monster this is. I didn't actually design it. Because it's just, sometimes things are scary when you don't know what they are. But, um, rereading this reminded me of something. Do you know what a bell diver spider is? It is a spider that can, like, weave a little web around its abdomen to catch air bubbles, which lets it dive down under the water and, like, have little underwater nests. Kind of like a beaver, but evil. And that's kind of the vibe I was going for here. The thing that you was that you got grabbed by it is some sort of freaky spider thing, at least in my opinion. It doesn't actually have a shape, so it's really up to you what kind of creature you think is devouring you soon but uh yeah you definitely died at the end of that uh there's no happy for the ending for that guy it's just a creepy little piece with uh some creepy little feelings (laughs) and i know that red likes that kind of stuff so luckily she decided i would win um let's see i have to look at the little script thing unfortunately because i can't remember all the stuff i'm supposed to say There's a very nice list of things. Here we go. Me, 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 me. There is no greater universe for this work. It's just a one shot. That poor sod that got dragged down by the monster into the lake. Very dead. That's it. My prompt for the next week was... I had another thing I could have looked at here. Ah, my prompt was... Their head is so empty that when you tap it, it rings like a bell. And Match has won that one, actually. With a very funny piece. I got a a big kick out of it. And hopefully you'll enjoy it too, because he is an excellent author. Let's see, anything else I need to say? I would love any questions that you have, or comments, or telling me that I I gave you the heebie-jeebies for one second, because I like, you know, positive feedback. Um, reminder real quick that we have a Patreon. It's super cool. It's got a couple of different sections now that are free access. And then if you subscribe to $5 a month, you get access to all of the embers, which are the scorches that were not picked but are still excellent. I would suggest it. They're really fun to read. I hope that you will have an excellent weekend and a good rest of your week as well. Keep that fire burning. The Cell Block Scorch is a production of Stellacore, an independent group of nerds sharing their obsessions with the world. We can be reached at thestellacore at gmail.com through comments on your podcast platform of choice, our Instagram, Stella underscore core, and at our YouTube, also called Stellacore. 
feel free to check out our other productions on our YouTube channel or our cosplays on Instagram. If you would like to support our creative endeavors, you can give a one-time tip to the Ko-Fi of the writer of your favorite Scorches, or check out our Patreon, linked in the show notes. There, you can access the winning Scorches and episode transcripts for free, or sign up for Spark Level support for $5 a month to gain access to all of the Scorch submissions.